reinsertion of posterior meniscal root for management of hypermobile lateral meniscus. The authors had no disclosures. Lateral hypermobile meniscus is a rare condition that can be found in adult and pediatric population. It causes for the sexy mobility of the posterior horn of the sternal meniscus and characterized for presenting knee pain locking, especially during kneeling or squatting. The lateral meniscus has more mobility compared to the medial because of the lack of attachment at the popliteal gyrus. The stability of the lateral meniscus is given by the three fascicles, meniscal tibial ligaments and meniscofemoral ligaments. It has multiple etiologies such as congenital and divisor type of discoid meniscus, traumatic because of the disruption of the stabilizer structures, or can be associated to a chronic ACL injury. There is a hypermobility of the posterior horn, which causes anterior medial subluxation more than a 50% of the tibial plateau, while keeping intact the posterior root insertion. For treatment, there have been described many surgical techniques such as collagen thermal retraction with radiofrequency or fascicles and meniscotibial ligaments repair. But there are no description for posterior root reinsertion for increased tension of the popliteal meniscal fascicles and meniscotibial ligaments to give stability to the meniscus. We present a 15-year-old boy with posterior lateral knee pain during squatting and pivoting, clicking during hyperflexion and occasionally swelling. During physical exam, we found a positive sign of four, moragas, and finocuro signs. In arthroscopy, we start exploring the popliteal hiatus to see the popliteus tendon and the three fascicles. After exploring the medial compartment to rule out other pathologies, in the lateral compartment, we can see a positive aspiration test. A positive traction test with the arthroscope proof. and cephalic laxity of the posterior root without this insertion. We give a grade 3 with our classification. We perform the treatment of the meniscal root footprint in the tibial plateau using shaver and radio frequency. The meniscal root is sutured with two high resistance sutures and a scorpion type suture passer. We used cinch type knots to achieve a secure suturing. For the tibial tunnel, we place the meniscal root guide at 50 degrees angle. We place a 2.4 millimeters guide pin. After that, we create a tibial tunnel using a 4.5 drill and the meniscal sutures are retrieved through the tibial tunnel. Before final fixation, we confirm meniscal stability by pulling on the sutures and ensuring that the aspiration test, posterior horn traction, and posterior root laxity were negative. Direct visualization is used to tibial fixation to observe the tension on the lateral meniscus. We employed a tibial tip knotless anchor to secure the meniscal root suture to the anterior medial tibial cortex. We reevaluate the stability of the posterior horn and perform the aspiration test again. Post operative imaging is used to confirm the position of the implant and the bone tunnel. In rehab, we keep soft dressing for five days, ice therapy and complete range of motion, no weight bearing nor hyperflexion for four weeks, 
and no paper movement for two months.